legendary one and only oh. Rikishi. <laughs> I miss you, Anne. I miss you, too. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Oh, my goodness. I'm honored, and I'm of, excited. Of course. <laughs> you were the first one on my mind. First and foremost, congratulations, brother. Thank you. The world's best. <laughs> hey, we made it, you know? We made it. We, we made are it. the judges. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm, I'm very excited. It's a, it's a special moment for me, personally. Yeah. Uh, I was able, if it wasn't for the show, I was in... Wouldn't be able to meet you. Yes. And uh, through the show, it's really, uh, with all the experts around the world, it's really, for me, uh, personal. And, uh, not only that, you know, we got to bond together for the last harbor. I think it was a whole month we shot the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, even after the show is still on right now, uh, here we are, uh, continue to link up, uh, continue to... I feel like we're all family, brothers and sisters now. That's what I refer to. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's the wall of the world family, really. Like, we really, truly love each other. <laughs> it's funny. It, it's a reality show in itself. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> if you can only see our, our, our WhatsApp deal on our, on our apps here, yeah. it's, uh, there's some that are crazy. That, you know, the beautiful thing is everybody's normal. You know, there's no ego trips. Uh, I know, and you know, you know, from my industry where I come from, and also in Hollywood as well. I mean, everywhere, pretty much. You know, in that group, there's always a few people with ego trips. Uh, but of course, to be able, you know, to represent your country and be uh, among experts from around the world, and to know that these uh, human beings are just beautiful people is such. I'm so honored to be amongst all of you. Yeah, me too. You know what was uh, really incredible to me mm -hmm. is you know how we would, and of course we cannot, we cannot, guys, we cannot give you any secrets whatsoever. But <laughs> I want to. <laughs> <laughs> we can. The lips are sealed. But mm -hmm. you know how um, we would disagree and we would have heated discussions about like voting for one or the other. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we would all get back together, hug each other, uh, wipe each other's tears, mm -hmm. and move forward well, it as, was, as it, one. It was very emotional. Yeah, it was super emotional. I mean, it was emotional. Yeah. It was funny. It was uh, sad. It was happy. I mean, it was so much uh, different vibes in there during that show. I mean, there were some times where... We were all kind of like separated on our on our votes and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but at the end of the day, like you said, when we got back to you know to the green room, we all broke up, you know, in our own little corners in the, in the in the green room. But the conversations kept going. Oh yeah, like it never stopped. You know no, what I mean? Yeah. Because we really wanted to be able to come together and really give give props to the, the you know to the act that we felt was the world's best. Yeah. Shout out to Dell. Shout out to Dell mm -hmm. for creating the WhatsApp oh uh, group, for creating the <laughs> Facebook group, um, you know. whatever else group, and we all get together. If it wasn't for Dell, I don't think <laughs> yeah. the wall of the world would be, uh, be still communicate. I mean, I think I was the last one that got on to the WhatsApp, uh, mm -hmm. WhatsApp app. And uh, he came to me and said, Kishi, are you on this conversation that I said, no, what conversation? He just grabbed my phone <laughs> and then clicked it. And I said, this is your odds. So. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, my brother. <laughs> Love you, too. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. All in all, really, really cool experience. And you're right. The, the best thing, I mean, of course, the caliber of talent, it's mind-blowing. Yes. That was uh, attending the show. But the... The, the caliber of friends that we have gained on mm. this show, we gained each other's friendship and love, that is invaluable. You can't measure that. This is like a, a lifetime. Yeah. The way I feel. Yeah. Now, I mean, we have some of our experts, you know, everyone travels all the time. I know. They, and they, as they, I see, <laughs> everybody's hooking up. Like, if we're going, uh, I think it was Ida that just went to, uh, to Paris and, uh, as, uh, what was it? Sai's over there. It was a beautiful thing to see them hook up. You yeah, know, who also. Was, who was in South Africa just recently? Jorge. Jorge, yeah. 
Jorge was just in South yeah. Africa. Jorge yeah. was there in South Africa and met up with uh, Mama Shadow. Yeah, I really right? want to go to Mama Shadow's home. And I want to uh, have him food. And Miss Lira was there performing yes. as yeah. well. And, and she's just gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. Cape Town is a beautiful place. Uh, I remember when I went down there to, to wrestle. Well, South Africa was one of my favorite places in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, Sun City, South Africa, Cape Town, and Johannesburg. Mm-hmm. Uh, the food was just the bomb, man. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no way I could have do the keto diet over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, well, Mama Shadow, I we're know. coming. <laughs> we miss <laughs> Definitely. you. We miss you. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, let's talk about each other, right? Okay. Let's talk about you. Um, what was the point A to who you are today? World known, amazing person was the wow. biggest heart. Well, uh, I was uh, born and raised in San Francisco, California. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of my parents are from mm-hmm. Samoa. My mother is a uh, daughter of a preacher mm-hmm. from Samoa. So when my grandfather moved to uh, San Francisco to open up a church, um, came with my mother. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, I was, uh, uh, all my life was church with my grandfather. Yeah. I, my parents, we lived with my grandfather, mm-hmm. who was now known, you know, our last name is Anoa'i in the professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, my father was married to my mom, and here I am in San Francisco. Um, as we, uh, I went to, to uh, junior high school all my years of school, Went to Balboa High, got out of there, and then uh, at the age of 19, uh, excuse me, at the age of 17 or 18, uh, my my mother's uh, brothers, Alfon Sika, who were professional wrestlers, and then my uncle, High Chief Peter Maivia, who's a professional wrestler, and that's uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock's grandfather. Mm, You guys are related? We're related. Oh, wow. (laughs) And so, uh, you know, born the Samoan dynasty, uh, I started training and uh, turned professional at 21. Mm-hmm. I left the Bay Area. Uh, fast forward uh, 20-something years, 25 years. I came back to the Bay Area, and I was uh, inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame yeah. on 2015. So... Uh, it's been a long career, yeah. You know, uh, being a part of the WWE family, who is like a you know a second family to our family. Mm-hmm. Uh, WWE has been open for well over a hundred plus years. Uh, my bloodline has been in this family, uh, a professional wrestling industry, with WWE for well over seventy five years. Mm, wow. So I kind of say we were there from the beginning too, as well. Mm-hmm. And the bloodline continues on past, present, and future. And now uh, we have uh, one of the top superstars that are there, Roman Reigns. He's actually my uncle Sika's son. Oh, wow. And then I have my twin boys that are there, Jimmy and Jay, of uh, the Usos, that are there currently right now. Wow. <clears throat> so, How old are they? Uh, my boys are 33. Okay. 33, 32, but they're twins. Okay, yeah, awesome. So twins seems to run in our family. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> really? Are you a yeah. twin? Well, no. I people think I. Because I saw your brother. Yeah, <laughs> people think. I mean, we uh, we uh, we look a lot like from my grandmother's side, mm-hmm. and uh, which is uh, my mom's mom. Mm-hmm. And every everybody from our cousins to every we just have the same features. And you can see my grandmother and all, and we all kind of kind of look like twins. And strong you know, genes. It's, it's weird, yeah. yeah. The drive for success that you have had, do you think it derives in the, the lineage, or it, it's also like the, the personality trait? Well, it's in the lineage, but also in our culture. Mm-hmm. That anything we, we do, we just, you know, it means do it with honesty. Mm-hmm. And to continue to, to you know, to work hard. I mean, uh, I mean, we, we we were taught that from a young age back home in Samoa as well. Uh, we don't, you know, back in the day, we 
we grew our food, you know, mm -hmm. all the way from our chicken to plantation to nowadays there's drive throughs over there. But, you know, uh, when we were young, it, our grandparents and our, our parents we, uh, taught us to work hard. And I mm -hmm. think that rolled over mm -hmm. into the industry. Uh, when you have an island guy uh, coming into the industry, and, you know, I, I'm grateful and thankful that I had my uncles there to be able to give me the knowledge and the inside training of the business part. Mm -hmm. But as far as working hard, I, I think that was already in me, mm -hmm. you know, and I, uh, once I figured it out uh, that I knew exactly where I wanted to go and then was straight to the top mm -hmm. and to see what it felt like there, how does it look like there, uh, what comes with all that there. And I realized that that's not for me. Uh, I'm a simple person. It doesn't take too much to make Rikishi happy. Um, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not a glamour type of person to where you gotta have to have things to have people see me coming. Um, I'm just that. Uh, you know, there's those that you know. I'm not knocking it. There's those that like that in our industry, and that's fine. But for me, it's just uh, you know that, that's not for me. And I think you know. It's not like an act that I put on or anything like that. It comes from my culture of, you know, being respectful to those that, you know, because at one time I was that student mm -hmm. and I feel for those students. I know what they go through, you know, to be able to come to all those obstacles and, you know, uh, are they going to make it or are they going to, you know, are they going to like me or do I fit in and all that stuff mm -hmm. that comes with entertainment. Sometimes, you, you know, as well that, uh, you don't have the right look, but you know you're talented. And, you know, all of a sudden, maybe they're you know they're turning the storyline to a different place, and mm -hmm. but yet you know that I'm right for that part. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, may I look different? Maybe I don't look the size. May I don't? My eyes are not the color mm -hmm. that they want it to be. But at the end of the day, you know, I walk away. I walk away with my head up high, mm -hmm. knowing that I gave my best. What was your biggest obstacle when you began well jeez <clears throat> trying to get a, a paycheck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know I, I didn't look at it uh, uh, it, it was uh, learning every day on the road uh, you know how to get to where you know you know to be the main event you know how to become from the first mass because it's different levels in our industry and the more popular you are the more you know of course the more money you're going to make and, and but I, I always looked at it as a, as a way to you know how can I get to that part to be able to it, it, it was it was a paycheck for me that's how I looked at the industry mm -hmm. I didn't look at it as anything else I looked at it as a, I really believed that it was a sport mm -hmm. you know I mean uh, when we get in there you know guys get hurt you know a lot of people I say it's choreographed. Yes, it is choreographed, but it's sports entertainment. It's scary I mean, to look at. I watched some of your videos. It's really like, oh my god! I'm like, oh my yeah. god, that's my brother. <laughs> if I you I knew you then, I'd be really scared for you. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and that's the thing that you know when you get in there, you, you, all you see is what you see on TV. Mm -hmm. But when I came in there, you know, thank God that I was already trained and prepped. But just going through the motions now, you know. The traveling every day, 365 days out the year, uh, missing, uh, you know, birthdays and Christmas and mm. pretty much miss my kids growing up. You know, like I, I say, I know them, but I don't know them, meaning because I was r really never home. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, to to, uh, to to be out there in, the, in that industry, you know, I, it was work for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't even, you know, Gia, I didn't, if you ask me, have I been in, in uh, whatever country, China or Japan, I can say yes, but then I don't know what it is mm -hmm. because, you know, my scheduling, I fly in, we do the show, we're back out, next thing you know, we're in Germany. Mm -hmm. So it was always that, that, so was it fun? I don't know. I don't know what fun was because it just was work to me, mm -hmm. you know. And I guess at the end of the at the end of all these years, uh, mentally driven that away, it was able to you know the fans seen it, uh, the company seen mm -hmm. it, 
and was able to draw me to being inducted in one of the prestigious, mm -hmm. most, I was just honored to be even recognized for my work through 31 years of professional wrestling in the sports industry, mm -hmm. and, and I'm happy. Surely enough, I mean, of course you were, you know, wanting to provide for your family and, and so on and so forth, but there must have been some other, other motivation for you to be doing this hard work and, you know, performing because wrestling is a entertainment. Mm -hmm. And when I look at your videos, it's not my Rikishi that's sitting across from me right now. <laughs> it's a completely different character. Well... You know, to, yeah, I guess to per, to perfect the art of per, the, my craft, uh, I think I was, you know, very, very driven in that as well. But my motivation was my family. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it was, I wanted to, you know, to make sure that they're okay. Uh, I knew the numbers that were out there as far as each different professional wrestler. Well, I wanted to be that guy. If it took whatever for me to, you know, to really... Uh, understand my craft and work hard, you know, and then the, the business part of it, you know, it's not, I mean, you can be good inside the professional wrestling ring, but you also have to be smart business savvy as well, sure. meaning to know, you know, uh, as far as marketing yourself or what's the best deal for you to go or, you know, do, do we want to go that route? Do I want to play a bad guy? Do I not want to play a bad guy? So all that has to come to play and it was, you know, it's uh, it was uh, my passion of being driven to be the best in the business and uh, to work against those that are the mm -hmm. icons that are in this professional wrestling industry. And so I, I, I'm thankful and I'm grateful that every night I walk to the ring that I was able to walk back out the ring. Oh, wow. Because every single night, there's always a chance, 30 seconds, what we say. You have 30 seconds that at any given time, an accident can happen. You and I know as far as with even in acting in movies, you know, a stuntman or whatever, something might happen for whatever reason. It's a backfire. And in our industry, that, that applies to that. Mm -hmm. You know, that three-quarter plywood. Uh, that 20 foot ring and those steel metal poles and uh, and the beams that go across no matter how hard you train and you learn the craft that ring wins every night mm -hmm. every single night it beats our bodies up it beats it down and down and down until you just can't go no more and so you really have to love when you come into this industry of professional wrestling, uh, that's been so good to me, my family, and, and uh, the Samoan dynasty, my own, all 15 or 20 of us. It, I can't even count. But it's been real good to us. And I think that, uh, well, no, I know that every single family member of ours has given everything we, we've got, mm -hmm. every ounce, every strength, that every time we came out through those curtains, that we we came to steal the show. You know? What an amazing breed of people! So you think the the okay? Yeah, I, I get the whole. Uh, uh, by the way, I I just felt your pain. I really did. Like it went straight through me. It really did. Yeah. Um. So the the culture supports the way that you are. Like it it's it's obviously like part of that fabric mm -hmm. that represents Rikishi. Do you think faith is part of it as well? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Polynesian and Samoan in general, uh, the whole South Pacific, it's, uh, uh, faith is a big part of uh, our culture. Mm -hmm. You know, you name it. It's, uh, again, you know, my, my grandfather is a preacher. I mean... <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I went to Bible school, how many times that, you know, uh, we, we we went to church is nonstop. Where our house was church every night. And so, uh, yeah, and with that, and I had a good surrounding. That belief, is, is that part of, like, the secret of 
leaving that ring every night in one piece? I do pray. Yes. I, 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 I you know, I have my little moment uh, before I go out mm -hmm. and before I come back. And when I come back to the dressing room and there's nobody there, I'm sitting there with my towel over my head, mm -hmm. a nice cold bottle of water, and I'll just sit there just for downtime for like 20 minutes. And I'll just start to look at my hands, I'll look and start to feel my body because adrenaline is going so much. Yeah. By the time you come back, you know, I have that, that ritual, I just sit there and then I'll feel, you know, okay, you know, my back kind of feels out tonight. Well, then I'll kind of think about it. Where did it happen? Mm -hmm. And why did it happen? Because tomorrow, we have a show tomorrow. Now I'm going into that show injured with this lower back, but the show goes on. Why? Because you're a main event. People paid to come see you. And so it's, it's my responsibility to be able to show up to be able to perform and then, you know, uh, to, to make sure that I guard and protect this injury, this injury that I have for the time being until I'm able to get home to where, you know, I can rest up and, you know, see doctors, yada, 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 you know, so it's, it's, it's faith, it's passion, it's culture. It's family. Mm -hmm. It's it's my job. Mm -hmm. So how do you support your kids doing the same? Isn't it dangerous? Well, I mean, it is obviously my, very dangerous. Uh, trust you me, uh, we're my boys. Uh, they're very educated, college mm -hmm. graduated kids. And uh, I guess like me, I've been around it all my life. They've seen it all their lives. You know, I had to pull my kids out of school uh, to be able to go to different, you know, towns and you're living in different places. I mean, you know, we all have dues to pay when you right. first come into any industry. You know, you're like the green guy on the block. You know yeah. what I mean? Until you get smart, <laughs> until you figure it out. And you know, my, uh, you know, I wanted to to park, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a spot to where I don't have to move my kids anymore. And I parked in Pensacola, Florida because I wanted to be closer to the beach. I wanted to be closer to something that I'm used to, you know, from the islands. Uh, we, we don't see snow, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I picked Pensacola, Florida, uh, which is uh, in, down in the south by Moldby, Alabama. And my, my, my boys, that uh, my twin boys went to school there and graduated uh, from the Scambia High School. And... Uh, you know, our plan was for me to be on the sidelines uh, to be able to be on NFL uh, and support them and watch their mm -hmm. games and so forth. And, you know, I just uh, got hit from left field. Mm -hmm. And they both wanted to join the family business. Uh, they want to be able to, you know, you know, be a professional wrestler. And um, it kind of, you know, I was disappointed. <laughs> Why? Oh, well, because I didn't want them to go put their body through what I yeah, went through. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want them to make the sacrifice what I did to miss birthday parties, miss their. Is that what's happening right now with them? Yes, I mean, oh. anytime you're, you know, you um, become a pro wrestler and you're on the road in our industry twenty four seven, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to to have that balance. Mm -hmm. You know, with your family and, and, and your kids and so forth. Because, again, you know, if I could turn back time to where I, I would have loved to have been there for their birthdays and mm -hmm. Christmas. and Would you have chosen a I, different I, profession? No. Okay. With all the hardships? No. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't change my career. I've lived a wonderful career. I've met wonderful people throughout the world. I've seen the world was able to travel and see different cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, professional wrestling has, uh, has uh, fulfilled my life as far as everything around me. I mean, the balance of everything was complete for me. Mm -hmm. Now, for my kids, 
you know, they're going to find out. And now I kind of see now they've been in it for well over 10 years, but they're starting to feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you kind of get beat down. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I can see the difference. They're not too as excited that like they're going to Paris or we're going to Italy. Or oh, yeah, they've probably seen a lot already. There you yeah. go. So it's, so, not, it's not new. No, it starts to look, yeah. every hotel starts to look the same. Yeah. When you're in a rush, Gia, to leave right. or to get to the next town, all the hallways, they look the same. It's weird. You go to whatever beautiful hotel, everything looks the same mm -hmm. because your tunnel vision is to hurry up and go. Mm -hmm. I got to get there to the next place. So, you know, I might have been in the most beautiful hotel in the world and might, might have had a history of, of that hotel I was in or that city, but I never got a chance to explore all that. Is because it's the rush. It's, yeah. it's, that, it's that hurry up pack your bags and go. Mm. And that went on for, well, Jesus, 31 years. Yeah. Nonstop. So I'm, I'm worn out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to try. I got to tell you, um, <laughs> with everything you've done, and I don't usually ask questions about personal life, and I'm mm -hmm. not going to, but I have to say your wife must be, and I haven't met her yet, we yet to organize that. Yes, yes. But so she must be a very special woman. She's my backbone. Yeah. Uh, she's, uh, I don't know how she deals with me <laughs> or how, you know, with the industry and stuff. Mm -hmm. She's not a fan of the industry mm -hmm. uh, because of the chances of me getting hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, even from, you know, watching it on TV. And, and, you know, she has her own it, routine it must be and I leave it alone. super scary. Like that. I probably would have not been able to watch. Yeah, I think she's, uh, you know, she waits till I call. Mm -hmm. Make sure that I'm fine, you know, and then I'll, I'll hit her that I'm getting ready to go through. And then I'll hit her back when I'm done and mm -hmm. I say goodnight when I'm on, on the hotel. And, mm -hmm. and then she, so she could sleep. Then she could sleep. She has her routine. Yeah, Other, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, if I don't do that, then she'll be up all night wondering what happened or yada, yada, yada. And or what, what part of the world I'm at, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, but right now, I'm very, I'm very happy right now. The second part of my life right now. As uh, you see, my, I have my son, Samson. I'm able to go watch his games now. I, I'm able to take him to school normal time because I'm home. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to be able to and pass on he? the... He's 10 years old. Um, and I'm I am very happy. You're doing happy. it all over again. Yeah, but, <clears throat> you know... And this time, I really you're there. Now I'm like, you know, what it is to be dad. Mm -hmm. What mom goes through on 24 hours, I mean, that's hard work. Mm-hmm. What you guys do is very hard work to be able to take care of kids. I, I thought, you know, I didn't know nothing about that. But now with my son now, I enjoy it. I like having that quality time, being on the sidelines, supporting him and stuff like that. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, the second part of our, my life now is to be able to pass on what I've learned in the industry uh, at our academy, you know, with uh, with Knoxborough Academy now. That we was going to be my we next thing. We got to yeah. talk about your academy, and I, I got to go to your academy and take You're a look. You're more than at, welcome yes. to. Tell us about your academy. Well, Knoxborough Academy, uh, we've been open for ten years or so. I mean, we've always had the knowledge. Mm -hmm. We've always had the knowledge in our bloodline, but I felt it was important, you know, to be able to teach those that are coming through because wrestling. Is such a huge, huge business today. Such, such a huge industry all worldwide. And I'll tell you, you know, kids are just coming to this industry left and right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the games or it's whatever it may be, but everybody thinks they can be a professional wrestler. Mm -hmm. yeah? And you can, mm -hmm. but with the right training, you know. You can't have a shy bone in your body. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to learn how to adapt to a crowd when you're out there and performing in front of 70,000 mm -hmm. people screaming their heads off. And with Knoxborough Academy, uh, we teach the ins and outs, Gia, of, of uh, what it is to expect in the business. Uh, mm -hmm. We teach your fundamentals first and foremost mm -hmm. is how to fall. Mm -hmm. So we're like the stunt that would that, that is so scary. Well... You know, to be able to fall, like yeah. when you fall frontwards, I can see where I'm falling frontwards. But you imagine falling backwards and trying to like not 
you know, hit the back of your head yeah. to where you can, uh, I had countless concussions. I can't tell you how many concussions oh, wow. until I got it right. Even mm -hmm. though my uncles taught me, but you, we can teach you, but it's up to you to get it, to mm -hmm. find it, right? Mm -hmm. And so we teach fundamentals there. Uh, we, we train the kids and then we take them on the road. Mm -hmm. So we'll actually go into like, we have shows with Knox Sport Entertainment where we take them on the shows, the casinos, to we do things for the community, and to be able to teach them what it is to perform in front of a live crowd. Not only perform in front of a live crowd, but also to learn how to do meet and greets, how you're supposed to be, or you know that experience when fans are coming to ask you for your autograph, when at one point in your life nobody knew who you were. Now all of a sudden, everybody knows you. So we teach them how to balance that. Right. And then we take them all the way into... It's a school of life, more, more or less. That's what... Uh, professional wrestling has saved my life in that. Mm -hmm. uh, not only with the culture and so mm -hmm. forth, what we talked about. But some kids, you know, not everybody makes a jail when they come to, to, to our academy. Actually, and I'm what's straight, the ratio? Of, like, let's say 10 kids... How many? Oh, no, no, we have well over probably about uh, 60 kids. No, I'm saying yeah. like the, the, out of like, let's say 100 kids, how many will make it? Oh. What's the average? 10 maybe, 9. Okay. Because you have to have that it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have something about Can you that. recognize that? I, I can, yes. And what ages usually kids come? Well, kids have come through, I mean, with their parent signature. Uh, they can come through at 14 years old mm -hmm. and then on up to, I mean, we have students that come are 40 years old, but they come because maybe it's not hey, to be I'll in go. the ring. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, but they'll come because uh, this is the beautiful thing about it. Like s most of our students, some come and you can see right off the back, like, okay, he's not, you don't think he's that athletic. Mm -hmm. So we'll do a couple of tests to see, you know, how agile he is. You know, like you've seen some of my stuff. For the big guy that I am, I know I know that I'm agile. It's because of the training that I have mm -hmm. playing basketball, I was racquetball. Amazed. I was exactly. amazed. You wouldn't you, think you a 400 so pound. Fast. You don't yeah. think a 400 pound guy can move like that. But not to say I can't teach you that. You know, now when they come through, some of them just want to be a ring announcer. Some of them want to be a production guy to shoot videos. They just that's right. It's an be industry. A, they yeah. just want to be a part of that that mm -hmm. wrestling that they love. Mm -hmm. And so we don't shy away. We teach everything uh, mm -hmm. between me and my cousin, Count Black Pro Reno. Yeah. You always see. Okay, he's one. Of, he's my first cousin, yeah. and we uh, we both run uh, Knoxville Academy. And between him and myself, we produce well over 600 shows wow. over, in, over in Europe. Wow. So How could, have, how could uh, the viewers watch it? Oh, no, we, it's online. Uh -huh. You can see it used to be NW. We used to be there. Uh, we, we shut down and we left that place, uh, I want to say, maybe a, about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But we were out there for like... Are those uh, shows uh, still online anywhere? Yeah, there's, there's all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, wrestling, there's so many independent companies mm -hmm. that open up <laughs> wrestling mm -hmm. companies. But, you know, my thing that I say to kids, it's like college. You, you, can, you can go drive to the next state to the professor that you know is solid and knows what he's teaching... Or you can drive two blocks here because it's convenient to you knowing that this guy doesn't know nothing. And so when they come to our academy, we have people fly in from all over the world uh, mm -hmm. to be able to come and uh, get the knowledge. And, and it's more, I don't even look at uh, myself as a, a professor or anything of professional risk. When they come through, that's the beautiful thing about it. And I think here's my culture again. I don't look at them as students. I look at all of them as my kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look at them as the kids. For sure, they are the kids they are. Like you were saying, some of them don't look very um, athletic. You know, I've I interviewed uh, a bunch of people. Yeah. And uh, I remember this chat with uh, Alex Nevsky, who was a Russian producer. Mm -hmm. He was, he turned himself into this 
gorgeous bodybuilder man. He's super, super tall. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Six foot six. I don't know. He's tall. Tall guy. Mm -hmm. um, but as a kid, he was super skinny, stick skinny, like he says. Um, and you can never guess that he used to be skinny. that skinny kid. Right. You know? Looking at him now. Right. Uh, or do you think I'm athletic? Yes. Uh huh. You know, I was yeah. the super skinny. I've seen stick your video. <laughs> <laughs> I am athletic yeah. now for sure. Uh, but as a kid, I was a musician. And no. Yeah, I was a professional musician. I was in music <laughs> since I was five until I was twenty-five. Like, oh, wow. You know. Yeah, and so the the there was no, you know, physical education yeah. whatsoever. Meaning, yeah. like, all I did was, you know work on my music skills mm -hmm. you know the knowledge and stuff because it's like i had the super difficult profession but right. but later i turned myself into who i am today mm. because i felt like you know no no I, I i just wanted to be the better version of myself right you know choices yeah it's yeah. the choices so sometimes maybe one of those skinny kids yeah. if there is that personality you know, that will pull him through or her. Well, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it, you know, and I, I, I say at the academy, not, not every single one of you are going to make it. Yeah. I, the one thing you're going to get from me is a shoot answer. I'm never going to cover go yeah. anything. Yeah. It might hurt your feelings, but this is why you're here for me to tell you the truth because I don't want you to waste your time. I don't want to waste your, you can't get back time in life. Mm -hmm. So if you're not passionate and you're not understanding what's going to happen here at this academy and in this industry that you're here to, to learn, then if you're not fully ready for that, then I suggest you just pack your bags and go do something that you are passionate about and that you know that you'll be able to continue forward yeah. with that. Is that passion and ability to pull through being patient? Yes, I mean, not waiting for the overnight success and be disappointed if it doesn't come. Especially, you yeah. know, in you know every industry, I'm assuming is the same. You know, you, there's favoritism. Mm -hmm. There's those that, you know, that 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 Nepotism politic and, and, and all like of that, that stuff. Yeah. And that's one thing I hate. It's like it's like, you know, to me, if you got talent, and I, I tell my kids all the time, listen, you might not be figured in. But there is one thing that, that the promoters or anybody else can never take away from you. And that's that time in the ring. When you are there performing, it's all you. I'm not in that ring telling you what to do. You're going you're gonna to relate back to how you were trained. And you're going to have that little you know, bird in your ear, which is Rikishi, speaking to you during that time. Mm -hmm. And that's the time where you need to adapt and you need to take that opportunity that you're going to feel and see during that time. And once you take that opportunity, that, 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 uh, that opportunity right there can change things when you come through that curtain. Amen. Because they're going to ask you, who told you to do that? Mm -hmm. ah, I felt that. <laughs> well, that was a good damn thing you did. Yeah. Good for you for thinking that. Yeah. And there it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, every single kid, I, you know, some when they leave, you know, for whatever reason, uh, be it that they just either burnt out or they don't want to train, do the training because for whatever reason, you know, I miss them when they leave. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I see that, you know, they're able to take the training and the, uh, what they've learned and, uh, and apply it to their, you know, personal lives, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of kids that we get, they come from all different walks of life. Mm -hmm. Some are well off, some are not. Most of them are not. Mm -hmm. But I don't shut my doors on them. Mm -hmm. It's not about a fee, it's not about a membership for me. It's about what can we do to help this kid or this uh, person to be able to, you know, uh, live her dream or help become out of that that hole that they're in for a moment, you mm -hmm. know? I don't believe a person is down for, for so long uh, until you just make that choice. Mm -hmm. And that's free. It's free for us to make a choice. Of course. It doesn't cost anybody anything. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. You're yeah. amazing, Rikishi. Yeah, so. It's a walks of life, uh, Gia. What, what we've, I've been around amazing people, and I know my life is even going to get better. Yeah. Because now I'm around even 50 world experts <laughs> that yeah. I cannot keep thinking about you yeah. guys. Like, I even talked to my wife. Like, she's probably, Damn, is there any other subject you want to talk about? I just sit there and I laugh about everything because. Well, well you and I bonded like, right away. Yeah. I yeah, mean, over, over the keto diet. Over the keto. <laughs> and then that, you know, I when I got home and I explained to my wife, I said, I have a real good friend at the, I met at the, yes, at the, yes, at the show. I says, uh, you know, I was so, she was educating me so much about it. And she took time to sit down and tell me about, you know, and basically she's helping save my life. Mm-hmm. And forever, I will be forever grateful to you for oh, Rikishi. taking that time. Rikishi. Man, that's, uh, my yeah. sister, you see, I, I call. I, I don't even call everybody by their name on a WhatsApp. It's everybody's my brother and my sister. Yeah. The wall of the world, because mm-hmm. that's how I feel about mm-hmm. everybody. Uh, yeah, I call. I call us the family, <laughs> for sure. Exactly. So, besides the academy, anything else that you're you're planning? Like any other interests because you've mentioned movies yeah well i'm starting up well you know what it's weird it's like i'm getting these different offers again you know i was always you know at one time as a kid i was like insecure like hey my body looks different from and you know i have a little bit of rump shaker in the back of my hand Mm -hmm. (laughs) that the normal man doesn't have and for a while you know my mom always says shake what your mama gave you Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if you watch my 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 career through the years, I went through different characters, and then I became a sumo wrestler. But I was the first man to wear a thong, a sumo thong, on Were national you? TV. I was the first guy to wear that. And you know, you go out there, you're in national TV. Do I want to do this? <laughs> do I? But let alone, it was my rump shaker that took me straight to the bank. I was the it first, I think, straight. first girl mm-hmm. in Kazakhstan wearing leather shorts on national television. <laughs> there you go. Like, we I question think, ourselves, right? I think I shocked everyone. <laughs> right? Because it's not the norm, right? Yeah, no. And for, for, for me, being in the industry, like, you know, that's when I knew that, you know what? I'm going to make this character work. I'm going to give it the sumo, but I want to give a twist to it. I want to be the sumo. What what does do sumos don't do? Right. Well, you don't ever see a black, bleach blonde hair sumo, especially a Samoan sumo. Mm-hmm. And then I wanted to, if you've seen some of my stuff, I wanted to, you know, to treat my fans after for this is my way of saying thank you for coming, is I wanted to give them something different. And I love to dance. I used to dance when I was, uh, you know, mm-hmm. started dancing, actually making money. Uh, in, in the entertainment, uh, standing in a corner of uh, Fisherman's Wharf mm-hmm. in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. My cousin had I a box of place. radio. Mm-hmm. I was standing on a milk carton, and I used to do all the... Who I said, <laughs> all the <laughs> really? I said, oh, I used to do all the pop logging. Mm-hmm. So entertainment was in me already. It's just which route was I going to go. Mm-hmm. So the movies, you know, I, I'm down for it. You know, I, I, I embrace the challenge. And it's, it's okay, we'll, you know. We'll have a chat. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. I'm even doing stuff right now, um, going into doing uh, comedy shows. Well, you are on, you are on CBS show. Yeah. This is this is an acting gig. Well, there it is. You know I what mean, I mean? Yeah, we're judges. We do judge, but we also mm-hmm. are on camera right. at every given moment. And just through this show, too, as well, it's really helped me to... Like, right now, I'm just taking chances. Uh, I mean, I have an agent now who just stewed off me with a uh, KMR, uh, KMR. Another judge. Yeah, another judge. And, you know, there it is. You know, we're all talking and so forth. But he says, uh, you, what do you think about trying some of this comedy stuff? You know, we see some of your uh, uh, comrades doing the same thing out there. And I said, well, I'm down. Okay. My story would 
probably be people will want to know, well, why did I stick my ass in people's faces? <laughs> or why did I wear a thong? You know, yeah. it's because I can. <laughs> yes. No so, other reason. Of no other reason, right? Yeah. And so I'm excited to take on that challenge. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, hopefully one day I'll be in the movie with you. Oh, I'd love why that. Not? Why not? You know what I mean? I'd love that. I'd love that. So sure. I'm probably going to um, kind of use my wrestling skills to adapt towards Hollywood. I'm not really a Hollywood It's all the same. Movie type what, what you yeah, said, yeah. What, what you've said about the personality traits. Yeah the way of dealing with it, all the uh, challenges and hardships and not seeing the kids. It's movie industry same all the thing. way. It's the same, it's absolutely wow. the same. I think every industry, it doesn't matter which one you choose, if you really want to make it, yeah. it's the same. Maybe, you know, some professions are not physically that challenging because right. you literally, literally um, you know, endangered your life every time you win the ring. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But other than that, it's it's the same same kind of, you know, um, strength. Right. Yeah. Well, I think I got my itch. Um, I did my first one uh, with one of the Italian producer from uh, Italy, and uh, he actually was a part of our our TV crew when me and my cousin. Uh, uh, Reno ran uh, Italy, Europe for 10 years. Mm-hmm. He opened up a company called NWE, a professional wrestling company. So the camera guy, which is Stefano Mila, was a, a movie producer. And, you know, we were running shows like nonstop, uh, I don't know, maybe about 10, 10 shows a month maybe in, in Italy, all up and down Europe, mm-hmm. you know. So we were, it was like my second family now because mm-hmm. I'm seeing you all the time. And it's, it's after work when we're having a glass of vino, you know, just sitting there. And, and, and then your mind starts flowing. What else can we do? Right. What else? Because now you're getting creative now. Well, well, because you went from one level mm-hmm. to a next one to a next one. And every time you reach a point, it's not really a destination. It's a step number one again right. for something new. Where do we stop? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why? Why should we Where stop? We we'll stop, stop when we uh, transition. We, yeah, we're trans- <laughs> Finally. <laughs> and so he, you know, I got on my first taste of movie with Kingdoms of Kingdoms of Gladiator. Mm-hmm. It's on Amazon right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I got my first taste of Hollywood through him. Meaning, hurry up and get, uh, get what is it? Hurry up, uh, get dressed and wait? <laughs> yes. That <laughs> and have people come do makeup and put makeup yeah. with that. There's you know a lot of I mean? waiting there, yeah. And so all that. I mean, I sat in a chair and they said, "You're on set." So I come out there and I'm sitting on this chair. They make believe big. I was like a high chief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and I was sit on this chair, but I was in that chair for like eight hours. Oh my goodness! And I was like, okay, this is probably the part of Hollywood that I don't like. Yeah. Is because uh, in professional wrestling, when we're live every Monday, every Tuesday, you just give me my give me my uh, my my finished part. I, I I got the I got the whole thing. What I'm supposed to my bullet points, mm-hmm. and it's one, two, go, yeah. So we learn how to adapt on stuff mm-hmm. like, but not Hollywood. It's like Hollywood, I have to go... Hollywood is the challenge of waiting. And it's not just waiting. It's it's waiting for people to respond. It's waiting for people to read your script. It's <laughs> waiting for, like, people to, uh, you know... Too much waiting. Whatever. Like, it's, it's the challenge of waiting. Right. There's too much waiting for oh, you. I've like, been challenged. I want to hurry up and get this done. So, yeah. I like it. You know, I, I like all the... We're not used to having people, you know, come put makeup on us and stuff like that. We we're used to just handling it mm-hmm. ourselves, and I think you know I've learned to wear with the uh, producers. You know they kind of like how the wrestlers work, well, because we're like that. It's getting yeah, you know ready, t- ready, t- ready, t- time is ready. money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So we gotta hurry up. Let's get this shot here. But then at the same time, is they want us to slow down. And so mm-hmm. I almost feel like sometimes like that I'm just stealing money, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm on set and I'm just. <laughs> Waiting, like I could have done this thing here, this this uh, scene in two minutes, you know yeah. what I mean? But 
I don't mind. We get to eat the catering and have <laughs> have good conversations, I guess. But we know it's fun, and it's fun to see yourself on the screen. Yeah, and I like that. You know, mm -hmm. after, uh, I mean, uh, so I did that, the Kingdom of Gladiator. Then I got to work on one of Hollywood's biggest superstars, uh, to me, funny man. I'm a fan of Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. So we just did a Netflix deal called Sandy Wexler, and I got to work with uh, Terry Crews. Nice. Uh, so we choreographed, helped choreograph all the, because he came to our gym, mm -hmm. and me and Terry in the scene, we were like, he was a, a wrestler, mm -hmm. and I was myself, and so we had to kind of, you know, I had to kind of teach him the bumps, the falls, uh, you know, all that stuff, and it was fun, mm -hmm. you know, so, so I think Hollywood's probably my next step, and being a coach with, nice. with Knoxville Academy. Yeah. Rikishi, I love your brother. This was amazing. And it was touching you. You you opened up in a very different way to me today. I saw a side of I, you I haven't seen before. You know? You're my family. And thank you so I much. Thank you. Thank you for letting me feel your heart. It was really something. Thank you, sister. Mm. And listen, I want you guys to continue to uh, keep it locked on Hollywood Film Academy. I make sure if you guys have a chance, make sure to stop by. And, you know, I'm not saying this because it's a plug, but I'm saying it because it's real to me, meaning that I met a real one. And a real one, I don't run into too many real ones, but this one here is a real one. Thank you, brother. Okay, love you. Love you. Thank you, sister. Uh,